I'm feeling kind of out of sorts. I was running late today, so I didn't get to do my morning TikTok scroll. Oh. I use TikTok the way you use Celsius. So (laughs) it's what wakes me up. It's what helps me feel alive. Get me going. So your juice. Yeah. So I don't know what anyone's doing on the internet today. feel discombobulated. Welcome to Disrespectfully. With Katie Maloney. And Dana Kathan. Unapologetically. We're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're going to see the power of women. Like, disrespectfully. My TikTok scrolls at night. Well, sometimes in the morning, but I do that like to kind of like unwind. Yeah, mine's constantly. I'm constantly in a TikTok scroll. But yeah, and then, oh, my nighttime. I can't decide which one I love more. The nighttime one is to get in bed and no longer have to speak to anyone and scroll. Either do mm. like the, the nighttime TikTok scroll or the nighttime shit post. What's that? You've seen it. That's all my close friends. The close, oh, the close friends, all the memes. The unhinged memes. A lot of hot dog shit going on there. They're really good. I know. I feel like some of those could be public for public consumption. I, think people I know, like but them, like, but... I think some people, it's just kind of be like, what is this? It's okay. The thing, but, the, but the thing is, is like, I use my close friends different than you do. Your Correct. close friends, it could be a group chat. It is. It's essential. Mine's essentially a group chat. We're, I can send nudes in there and it'd be fine. Where my. <laughs> Sometimes I kind of have and people are like, we don't need to see this. And I was like, I don't <laughs> care. You're here for a reason. Where my close friends are just people that like, I also like follow yeah as well it's not just like everyone that follows me no i'm realizing i think i'm the outlier in the way i operate on close friends i don't think anyone i act like it's like a blood oath like (laughs) i'm like maybe i have it ingrained in my dna from top eight back in the day in myspace maybe like it's yeah no one else acts the way i do it isn't like so precious about it well i think sometimes people like might think like oh close friends is it like are we like that i'm like no it's just when you have a lot of followers sometimes you want to be able to like go back to like having it just be like we're you're interacting with like people that, you know, not that you feel like you're friends with, but it's just like, it, for me, it's not that deep. She can act like a civilian. Or I can just be like, all right, well, I feel like maybe we don't know each other, but like I can be free to post what I want. Free of judgment, perhaps. Free of judgment in this economy. I don't know about oh, that. Oh, yeah. You're looking very cute today. Thanks. I, um, I don't really know. I, didn't, I don't know what this was about, but I just kind of threw something on. Do you notice anything different about me? Different? Mm-hmm. Are we wearing certain leggings? <laughs> you're, you're looking at them, so you're doing it right. Not certain, but leggings. I did open the legging drawer. I like got on my soapbox and I was like, <laughs> I'm going to start dressing. I'm going to use my clothes. And then the bats went right back in the closet and the legging drawer opened back up, which is fine. Okay, like, is that what it was? The, you're wearing leggings? Yeah, but I mean, like, like you only went... <laughs> You had one day we put on. Well, I was like hoping to make it a trend. I'm hoping next week to get back on the horse. But it's but. fine. It was a, it was an off morning. You didn't do your TikTok scroll. You had to go to the legging drawer. I get it. No. Yeah. I was desperado. <laughs> I was like, what am I supposed to do? Try and figure out an outfit. I don't have an extra hour to I, be here. I was laughing so hard the other day because I was folding laundry and I was like trying to fold some leggings and the legs were stuck together. And when I pulled them apart. They went <sighs> like Velcro. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, that's so funny. I was had a little like a little moment. A little. (laughs) Well, you look like you have quite the project going on at your house. Well, I'm trying to do a little spring cleaning because like my situation, my room has been not pleasant because I just my closet is not functioning. I have too many clothes. So I was like, I need to get rid of stuff. And I've been like on tilt the most amount of perch, just like not even thinking, just like looking at something being like, bye bye, bye bye, which feels really good. But it's like I have like six bags filled of clothes and that's just been pants and sweatshirts i haven't even gotten to the rest of it i haven't gone through my shoes and i'm going through everything every rack every section of my closet every drawer of my closet like i'm going i want to purge my whole life because i need a cleanse for me that has to happen when i'm in a particular mood you have to catch me wanting to but when i want to and i'm motivated to i get so horned up for that like i don't it's kind of like a dnd moment i don't want to talk to anyone i put a podcast on or music mm-hmm. and you're just in it but I have to do it in sections. If I have to do it all at once, if, like it'll freak me out. So if I just if I if I'm able to look at it like okay, I'm going to focus on like this particular like drawer or section of drawers or section of closets, I it can like it feels more approachable. If I'm looking at the whole of it, I don't know. It's like for some reason I get overwhelmed and then I never do it. That's and then I get to this point where it's just like I run out of room and then just stuff is living everywhere on mm-hmm. the floor, <laughs> on the like little bench, on my bed. That's that's where I was out with stuff. It's anarchy. <laughs> but then it feels good when you get rid of it. 
It's like, oh who my am God. I? Who is this slim down closet? Time to buy more clothes. Oh my God. Am I a minimalist? Mm. I, well, I was going to say, I'm much more of a minimalist. Like you have a lot more stuff. So yours is more of a project. I could probably knock it out in one setting because I have. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a clothes, shoe, that kind of hoarder. Yeah. I've just accumulated. And also when I went from like having like a house and much more space to kind of spread out to going to the space I am now. And I've obviously I've accumulated more since I've been there. But it's just like, yeah, I needed it. And also it's just like, I, I don't know. I've kind of like had a little bit of a style evolution. So I really don't. I don't know. I'm like, I'm not going to wear this shit again. It feels good, but that's been the latest with me while I have the time and the patience and the motivation. Love. Yeah. Anyways, should we get the, the, the main thing out of the way? Yeah, I'd say so. The thing that people want to hear us talk about. The big tattooed elephant in the room. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Yeah. The latest episode of Vanderpump Rules, there was a, an event that took place. Sure was. So <laughs> I'm going to let you talk about it first. I want to, because I'm curious, like, Watching that episode back, what what you felt about it or if your feelings have changed about how things kind of came out. And perhaps maybe people are behind. So spoiler alert, if you're not caught up on Vanderpump Rules, maybe give some context. OK, so what happened um, on this episode, the thing that we're talking about is that I had relations with Max Boyens, who Dana also previously had relations with when she came into Vanderpump Rules back. I don't know what year it was, but in season eight. Mm-hmm. I hate referring to like my life and this life in seasons because it's like it's life, you know, it's not like show. But anyway, so yeah, it happened this night. We went to Hotel Ziggy and um, there's a lot of alcohol, involved, like a lot. And um, it came to light because Sheena has Max's location. She has apparently like 56 people's location, not mine. So she was able to see his location at my place and, you know, from there. And then Brock knew that as well. And, you know, because it was like not on camera, Max isn't on the show. I wasn't going to bring it to the show. There's no reason. The only person I was going to bring it to would be you because you're, you know, it's kind of like a need to know basis. So yeah, then it kind of blows up. Watching it back and hearing kind of people weigh in on it. Of course, like Tom Schwartz was like, what? Max? Max? You know, like, t- like I-, I wasn't surprised by his reaction, per se, and I honestly didn't care. Like, I don't owe him anything. I don't really care. He kind of blew um, our whole, like, agreement of not hooking up with friends or people in this group to bits when he did that whole thing with Rachel. <laughs> Raquel. Last year. I always accidentally call her Raquel. Like I jump back and forth. I'm really not trying to be any kind of way. So maybe we should just call her Raquel. It's like when I, whenever I'm thinking about like that time, I, I, I'm tempted to call her Raquel. But then when I'm trying to like, it's just like Raquel. <laughs> Rachel. 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 I wasn't like thinking about anything, unfortunately, which isn't like an excuse. Um, but like, I think to explain my headspace would be like a runaway train and like, the simplest of ways i think coming from the season previous which was awful and terrible and then coming back into the season which was awful and terrible in different ways i had found out that like tom and sheena had like kept something from me and it's like even though i like it's not like i didn't care it didn't feel like good it's like once i get them in a space that's like not safe people don't give a fuck about me people don't support me and i think i just kind of like was wasted and I was just like, I don't give a fuck. It was selfish and reckless and it was a runaway train. Like I just like didn't think about anything. And then it was like, the next day I was like, oh, that was not a good place to be in because obviously like the first thing I thought about was you. Cause I was like, I don't do that. I'm not somebody that like competes with my friends or like tries to get me a validation of like hooking up with people that my friends hooked up with. I don't know. I don't like to like cross contaminate yeah. <laughs> in that sense, period. I just, I don't do that. I don't break like girl code like that. So I was just like, fuck. I was like, I want to talk to Dana immediately. I don't text. I'm not going to hit like text you. I don't want to even want to pick up the phone and call you. I was like, I want to see you and tell you. And I knew that like, and whatever happens, like I have to like accept that. If you're like, fuck you, I never want to talk to you again. I have to accept that. And I hate that because like I did that to myself, but like I have to accept that because of like my own actions, you know, but I couldn't undo it obviously then when it comes out on the show and production hears about it they're like oh well now we're going to take control of this and how you're going to like 
tell Dana and I had to like hold it. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess, and also we need to give more context. And first of all, I'm getting blown up right now about it because obviously people who remember me from the show remember that mm. I was dating Max back in the day. So people are like, oh, do you have an opinion? Of course I have an opinion about <laughs> it. Duh. Obviously I feel how I feel and we're going to get into that. So for context, some people who don't like me or, you know, I'm sure most people are indifferent would believe that I got fired from Vanderpump Rules. Definitely no. did not get fired from Vanderpump Rules. I left on my own accord and mm -hmm. I was asked back for season nine for season 10 and then for season 11. It came down to a lot of things for me that it in terms of it not being a good fit. But financially, it's funny that people think you're on the show and you make all this money, but you get paid very little to nothing when you first start out. Mm -hmm. And so it just kept not making sense for me for many different reasons. But that was a big factor. So in season 11, when they came back around, they're like, OK, we can have you film, but we're not going to pay you anything and whatever. And I was just like, no, I don't. It's just not worth it for me and whatever. And then that was toward the end. That was like the last month of filming. They were like, OK, we're going to bring you back into the pocket. Here's some dog food in terms of money. But like, you know, why not? And I kind of was just like, OK, they brought me in. And the first day of filming was that conversation. I obviously did not know what the conversation was about. I knew that we were going to an event later. And then you sat me down and told me and Ariana was there. And then I we like went to a thing. And then the next day. I had a full blown panic attack about the show. Like, I'm sure if you look back at all the things that I've said about it, it can seem wishy washy. And I understand that. But like there were positives for me being on the show, but there were also negatives. And it was very detrimental to my mental health. And like, mm -hmm. I don't like fighting with people. And you've said this before, like you don't like it either. But like I just my threshold for that in my normal day to day life, I do not have people in my life that I just fight with all the time. It's not a mm -hmm. thing. If it's going to be that way, then those aren't relationships I keep around. So it's hard for that to translate for me for something that, you know, is your work. And so I quit. I quit immediately. So you'll probably see me on the next episode is split in the background. And people I'm sure will be like, why is she there? Because I was yeah. thinking about it. But then I was just like, you know what? I hate this. Like, I'm not doing this. I mean, my initial reaction, I was I was shocked. I was when you told me because I when I when I didn't know what the context of the conversation was, I was just like, I didn't know what I was expecting we'd be talking about, but I certainly didn't think it would be that. I think my main thing about it is I do not want my name mentioned in the same sentence as his name ever again for the rest of my life. And I'm sure that he also feels that way. So it kind of felt like I was then again lumped into this narrative that I just didn't had not wanted to be part of for a really long time. And so it was more about that. We've obviously talked about it. But the thing that bothered me more than anything is that this event happened between the two of you and you didn't know if I was going to be upset about it. And then, like you said, would have to like answer to that after. And it and it could have affected our friendship. But I could not have a lower opinion of Max Boyens if I tried. <laughs> it is in the gutter. It is at the core of the earth. And again, to be fair to him, because although he thinks I'm a fucking psycho, I'm actually very level headed. He feels the same way about me. And that's totally fine. There were times when we were cool. Actually, the night, the last episode, we talked about catching Joe and Rachel with Tom and Tom at that bar we all go to Max showed up that night and Max and I had been cool he asked me to meet for coffee like maybe six months before that or something we hashed it out we were basically just like this has been done for a long time we see things differently and we all we were all drinking a lot and he ended up flipping out on me and screaming at me for an hour which you and Raleigh sat there and watched things that he was saying about what happened between us I'm like your view of reality is so distorted and he blamed me for a lot of things that he needs to take responsibility for himself Mm -hmm. in his own life. The things that, that hurt me the most about it is Max is not someone I look at that like, oh my God, this was someone I seriously dated and I was obsessed with him and whatever. It Well, at the time, obviously, I really was down bad for him. But meaning now, I'm like, he could have sex with anyone. I don't care. And not to mention, Max also owes me nothing. Like, of course, like it's it's been so long and it really didn't matter. But the thing that bothered me about it is more so that Max has treated me very poorly for years and has been a malignancy in my life for years, way beyond us dating. So that it was more just like not even a girl code thing where just like uh, this person has been, you know, really bad to me. But and I still would consider that to be. Well, yeah. But so I'm saying people are like, wait, how do you feel to your ex? I'm like, oh, I don't look at it like that. Like it's uh, of course there are feelings about it. But more than anything, I was not going to let Max interfere one more relationship in my life. And you are one of my best friends. And of course, it wasn't like I heard that. and It was like, oh, my God, that's thrilling. Tell me about it. Like, mm -hmm. it was more just like, OK, this happened. And also, Max slept with a girl that I was really good friends with a few years ago. 
again, Max didn't owe me anything. And it was a it was a different situation. It truly like I hold her to a different standard because the scenario went down. And also how she told me, like, you were very anxious about it and you were very upset about it. And because of the show, you had restraints as to when you could tell me and how you could tell me. And yeah, it was just a very different thing. She wasn't on a show being told, like, you have to wait till this day and whatever. And it just like obviously was really icky to me. However, I'm honestly grateful for that because that girl was, you know, those friends that like aren't really your friend, but pretend to be for whatever reason. And Mm -hmm. I have my own theories as to why she never wanted to be friends with me, but she was just always very competitive with me and was just gross. And it, it made me realize that and like cut her out of my life immediately. And but then also there was other things that were going on that it just it highlighted. So I'm actually like grateful that that had happened because who knows if I would have seen her for who she was but it also just felt triggering in that way though just because I'm like Max you don't owe me anything but like get go away like I just fucking can't and more than anything like I said I just don't want to be mentioned and the same I like to forget that he and I ever dated truly he is the one person I I don't I'm not like not cool with anyone I've ever dated there are people I don't speak to just because for my own you know mental wellness I just cut people out and move on but like wish them well He's the only person that I'm like, full stop, hardcore regret. I also take a lot of accountability for the way I let him treat me. And for, you know, he was a big one where it was like, he was saying something very different to me than he was saying to other people, but actions speak louder than words. And it was so clear that like, he didn't like me enough to want to date me or whatever and was leading me on and was lying. And I just didn't want to believe it. So like I I totally am accountable for that. He's in his own category as far as anyone I've ever dated. So of course, anyone that I'm so close to to be involved with him in any way because of that. Yeah, it's, of course it's done. But it wasn't it just was like you're so much more important to me than a petty situation that happened when you were drunk with someone who I don't hold in high, high regard. Yeah. Well, and like I told you, you're more important to me than any of that as well so I don't I want you to think that that you are disposable to me or that like you know I just that, that I just wanted to try to explain the headspace I was in that it was just well and also yeah. for, for people listening to this we obviously have talked about this privately mm-hmm. and also this happened in August yeah so it's currently March when we're recording this so it's like that was another thing for the show that was hard for me, which I'm sure is hard for all of you that you're on it, you mm-hmm. live these things and then you go through it again six months later. Yeah. And to hear people say like, oh, it was a long time coming. Says who? That wasn't my opinion. And that's not how I felt about it. Yeah. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. That that rubbed me the wrong way. When I watched it back, it was like it was a long time coming. I don't necessarily see it like that, even from what I've seen and like know from behind closed doors. But I'm just like, I don't know if that was just to try to make it more interesting or if, or if Max really believes that. But also Max, I feel like, feels like everyone's fair game. Like, I know for a fact that he reached out to a mutual friend of ours when Tom and Ariana broke up, obviously, when he cheated on her and, you know, really hurt her and was like, would it be weird if I asked Ariana out to drinks? That doesn't shock me at all. I mean, I was, I was surprised because Max and Tom and I would hang out all the time. Yeah. Like the three of us. So um, I was surprised that after Tom and I split that like I don't know he would like respond to like one of my stories and be like oh like what's that and I was like you know and like a in a way that flirting yeah and I was like or could be interpreted as flirting it became more obvious like that and I was like odd well yeah in the situation more than anything I mean it doesn't sound like Schwartz really cares or is fine with it but no, like and that <laughs> more than anything that is like again I think it speaks to Personally, it does back up my my view and perception of who Max is. He does not give a fuck. That is one of your best friends, ex-wives. It's way more on their thing is weirder, way weirder to me. But that's how he is. He literally will just try and hook up with anyone at any time. I don't think he has any standards as far as like who he could hurt. Like it's just how he operates. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I definitely wasn't the aggressor in the situation. And how did you feel watching that back that they cut it? Well, and then also like there was the after show where your version of it was very different than everyone else's, what they were talking about. Like, what would you say about that? Bessie. Bessie. I feel like the weather has truly been all over the place. There was a day last week where it was beautiful and sunny. And then out of nowhere, it was just started like downpouring, like hail. It's been flooding. Yeah, yeah no. That's what's making all the and, potholes happen. But that's why I love my Bessie weekend sneakers. Because not only are they super cute, but they're perfect 
come rain or shine and they really save the day during the storm because there's literally nothing worse than wet socks. Squeaking all day, walking around. <laughs> Terrible. I brought my new Vessi Stormburst low tops on the cruise and they were incredible. I felt good wearing around the boat because as we know, those floors can be real slippery at sea. They were also great for exploring the sand, the pavement during our excursions. It was just a multi-purpose shoe. That's right. We love her. Born for a love of the outdoors, Vessi footwear is designed to help you step confidently into adventure from sun-soaked streets to unexpected summer showers. Summer brings warmth, but like you said, it also brings surprises. With Vessi, get ready to enjoy the season to its fullest, no matter what it throws your way. Embracing every splash with Vessi's technology ensures you stay cool, comfortable, stylish, from city walks to beach escapes. And I mean, they're cute. Super cute. Which is hard to find in a shoe that's so versatile. It's a lifestyle choice that embodies versatility, confidence, and innovation. It can be hard in a shoe to find one that seems too good to be true because it has it all, but Vessi does. That's right. Elevate your summer activities with Vessi's Stormburst and Weekend Shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com slash disrespectfully. Get your pair today to get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to stay cool and dry. Again, that's Vessi.com slash disrespectfully for shoes that masterfully combine waterproof protection with urban elegance. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way through the, did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. You don't have to sell just your own stuff anymore. With Shopify Collective, you can curate products to sell from the brands you love, giving your customers more variety and your business more sales. What I love about Shopify is no matter how big or small your business is, they're there to help you grow. Do you want marketing made simple? Duh, who doesn't? Shopify removes the guesswork with built-in tools that help you create, execute, and analyze your online marketing campaigns. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S., and Shopify's the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support you and your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash disrespectfully, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash disrespectfully now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in, Shopify.com slash disrespectfully. I feel like that was also try, trying to really highlight and call back to like last year of like when I was doing the whole like don't hook up with anyone in the group and trying to paint this like hypocritical sort of like thing or could it be a double standard thing, you know? And it just was like, I thought it was very clear about Tom and I were trying to have this like friendship and that was one of the stipulations to maintain a friendship but again tom was the one that blew that to bits so that no longer exists so and everyone was just trying to be like oh that's so hypocritical what's the double standard here katie so i think that i don't know if that was like to try to support that but i didn't like that and i didn't appreciate that because at this point like that don't exist but, but not to say like oh if it was max or someone else but it's just like Again, it wasn't a long time coming. It wasn't premeditated. It wasn't anything. Like, it could have been anyone that night. <laughs> I was in a very fine form that night. <laughs> the checking the location of it all under the guise of, like, just wanted to make sure people got home safe. Like, we're grown adults. And I, I had forgotten that Sheena had texted me, like, oh, text me when you get home. Like, ma'am, I was gone that night. So sorry that I couldn't recall you asking that because she posted on her story or something like, interesting because in the after show I was like oh you weren't concerned about my safety I'm sorry I couldn't recall a text message uh from three o'clock in the morning or whatever like you got me there I felt like my privacy was invaded do you believe that she was doing it to check on his safety 
No, I think she just was like, when she realized that we had left together, she wanted to like, just be, she got kind of like giddy a, about it. and A nosy Parker. A no, yeah, it's fine. But again, to like bring it up on the show like that with someone who's not a part of it. And then I don't know, it just, it just was like weird. I mean, I don't know. I didn't like any of it. I want to leave this conversation here. And specifically, I never want to speak about Max Boynes again. It goes without saying, I can't put mm -hmm. Max in my basement because he's never left my basement. But Max <laughs> is definitely in my basement and has stayed there. There. I think that's all there's to say about that. There you go. That's the, um, the tea on that. That's the tea. That's the scoop. I think people are so funny and silly that obvious, obviously we were going to talk about it and have opinions on it. And... Like I said, I'm excited to never discuss this again. It's just like, and again, this happened a long time ago. So yeah, it's not that deep, guys. Anyway, we can talk about what's been going on in your life. Your new fixation. Growth master. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You and the rest of the internet. I made a TikTok that actually blew up about it and he responded to it okay so i know that we are all responsible for our own algorithm okay <laughs> i want to start with that our visual diet my visual diet i made a tiktok and i was like being i was just being cheeky and i was like when you accidentally end up on girth master tiktok and i was like so here's the thing people a bunch of people were like commenting like accidentally and i'm like okay obviously i ended up on it for a reason so there is a an australian porn star that i love well, i don't even know if we'd call her a porn star she's like an of person or whatever yeah but i just really love how open she is that's why i follow her which mm -hmm. i'm sure people are trolling me like I'm, like I'm sure that's why but i actually her content is so authentic to me and she gets so much heat from incels and whatever and she's just like she would be a great guest on disrespectfully she's wonderful yeah. so they had a crossover because they did a video together so they were like making a they had a, a lunch and they were like after getting a lunch after a special hang with friends and they both recorded each other and were just like kind of looking around <laughs> and laughing. And so I, I was like, who's this girth master? So I go to his TikTok and he has fantastic TikTok commentary as well. His hands are the size of my skull. He could pick my skull up like I am yeah. six five. They're like bear paws. Or six, they're like bear paws. I'm sure he could pluck me by my head and just like move me around, which I'm sure happens on his videos with his partners that he like actually hangs yeah, out with. Yeah, he'll do like uh people want to be like hold this hold it he, yeah he, mind you i'm this is i'm holding a small water bottle right now but it would be like his hand would be like th i don't even know that how thing to would it. disappear completely just, this would be gone oh this would he with maybe even just his index finger his giant hands okay <laughs> do you believe that hand size correlates to dick size not necessarily but if, when your hands are that big oh yeah this is no i'm saying like he's obviously tall and giant we know it but i'm saying in life do you believe that no i believe that you think so? I, not a hundred percent of the time. I think there are outliers, but I don't. I usually like take note, and then sometimes you know when you just you're like, it's. I I feel like it's typically not someone with giant no, hands, but because I well, do you believe that feet then also? Yes, really. When, remember my bowling date with his twinkle toes that he had to go back for a size <laughs> nine or whatever. I mean, I I guess I'm. That's me using it up to my imagination because we didn't sleep together. But yeah, I was like, no. Goodbye. We're done here. I don't know. I don't think so. I've never, I mean, I've never had sex with someone that could share my shoes that like blew my mind is all I'm saying, but <laughs> we don't fucking know. Anyway, uh. so Girth Master, he like loves to show his hand. Yeah, people will be like, hold a coffee cup and whatever. So I'm like going through and I didn't, I don't have Twitter. So people are like, go look at his Twitter, like in the comments. So I, I ran, I broke an ankle sprinting to Pornhub and I like <laughs> typing Girth Master and I find his tiktok the gasp that i gasped when i first saw it and like you know the little thumbnails it would be like next to a girl's face and it was like the size of her face and i was like what is going mm -hmm. on here and then i saw a video of him comparing sizes which is what i sent you a screenshot of i got a screenshot guys i sent this to several friends without context just to like <laughs> and people would be like what he had a wine bottle next to his the girth master and it is the size of a wine bottle like up to the top with the neck of the wine. Tell them what you did. I had I had to myself go into my kitchen and like pick up a, a wine bottle and like hold it in my hand just to really get the full experience and just like really, you know, because you don't know that like you see him holding it and you see his, you know, next to it. And you're like, OK, but like he's got a big old hand and, a, you know, you can't really get, you, you know. It's hard to really get the whole visual. So I had it myself and I was just like, whoa, like whoa whoa he's not lying mm -hmm. 
I'm like, honestly, how many like, women are in your ba- in his basement in a different way? Who has survived that? <laughs> like, I want to know who these women are. How many are. people have you split in half? And he's he had one a video. He slept with a girl who was like five foot tall, <laughs> and she so she's like such a small person in general. And I'm like, are you okay? Like, I'm worried about you. Do we need to put on an APB? So I make this TikTok, it blows up. And I feel like talking about TikTok views is like talking about money. It's like, I got a million views, but they did, it blew up. And I didn't do any hashtags or anything. It was really a throwaway TikTok. I wasn't like trying to get engagement. This he, is what you went viral for. This is for. what I fucking go viral for, <laughs> for being on Girthmaster TikTok and I'm being like, what is your algorithm about? I'm like, well, you're not wrong. God damn it. So he comments on it and he follows me. And he like made some cheeky comment because he's oh no or he's oh on. no and then he follows it's me like, on hey, Instagram. Sheila. <laughs> yeah, he's like put another shrimp on the bobby, eh? <laughs> he follows me on Instagram. Has he slid into your DMs? He hasn't slid into anything because I don't want that to happen. <laughs> he posted on Instagram my TikTok and tags me and he like follows me on there. And I responded back to him in the comments on TikTok and was like, "Tips hat respectfully." <laughs> I should have said this respectfully, I suppose, but I was <sighs> like, "Um, sir." A gentleman and a scholar, basically. But yeah, no, he didn't slide <laughs> in my DMs. He also says that he gets a bunch of people being like, come sleep with my wife in Arkansas. And he was like, I live in Australia. Where would I have time to go sleep with your wife in Australia? Like, blah, blah, blah. That was that. But then Katie, this is where it comes in. Your friend sent that TikTok uh, yeah, to you. Yeah, because I hadn't, I didn't even seen this yet. I, I, I was unaware of like your recreational, like. Girth master. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what you've been up to. <laughs> so a friend of mine. She sends me like a screenshot of his repost of your post and is like, if you see me on TikTok or whatever, no, you didn't. And I was like, hold on, hold on. She goes, she goes, yeah, so this is my mate. I've actually slept with him twice and I can tell you it's hectic. And she was like, yeah, it's, he's bas- his dick is basically the size of a wine bottle. And I'm like, excuse me? And I was like, hold on, I got to go look at this. And then I'm like, I got to go look at like his TikTok or whatever. And she goes, LOL, oh, well, I'm just laughing at what you're about to see. And I was like, well, I only see like giant hands. I don't I, I didn't realize that there was like a whole another section of what you were Leia, looking at. <laughs> do you want do you want me to text it to you right now? Yes. So I want you to react. You have to things. consent to it. You have to, yeah, I'm c- consenting. I consent. OK, consentingly sending you this. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm just seeing like big hands and him like lifting up tiny women. And like, it's just I'm like, OK, I mean, like there was like a gray sweatpants video which i'm like all right i see some i see like the you know the outline so i'm like all right i, I can i guess he's working with something over there and then you send me that so yeah she she basically was like uh, the only reason why i was able to like handle it is because i've given birth to two children but like oh <laughs> leah react <laughs> tell, tell them what you're saying react on it's the mic. literally the size of a wine bottle could you could you imagine no, by the no. way when i just selected mm-hmm. that photo and I clicked send. Do you know, it suggests the most hostile, just like in your Instagram stories, people. I almost just sent that to that guy that I, that soft goes to me who claims <laughs> I ghosted him. I almost just sent him the girth master. You know what? When people ask you for a picture, hey, 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 baby, send me a photo. <laughs> send that. And then no one will ever like, uh uh-uh. Katie, that is the most genius thing I have ever heard in my entire life. The most threatening dick pic possible. <laughs> it's so hostile. Petition Katie to make this a new system. Next time someone asks you for a pic and you don't, and they're annoying and you don't want to do it, go find the growth master, find the wine bottle photo, and send that to them. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to my ex right now. Like that's like <laughs> this, so smart. This is like way left field, but or like hard left. But it's like when um you wear like a band shirt. Do we talk about this on here? No, but when we you, need to. When you wear a band shirt and a guy calls you, like, oh, name name uh five songs or three songs by the band, and you're like name three women that trust you. <laughs> name three women that feel safe around you or that feel safe around you name three women that you've made come yeah you can't mm. doesn't exist exactly but i mean like this kind of situation it's like when they have the nerve to ask for a photo she's like oh here you go oh you might have me of me oh were you gonna send me one of you <laughs> that's cute katie this is one of the funniest things i've ever heard you say and genius pure genius we are everyone start doing that and also then send us in your stories of what their responses are because this is <laughs> Amazing. I think your friend is being really generous that saying just hectic. Hectic is crazy to me. You would need to train for months before trying to summit that thing. What would the training be? I mean, I know it's, it's okay. Like, so when you want, when you're preparing. Kegels? <laughs> no, because Kegels no, you keeps to, you tight. And, what's right. the anti-Kegel? What is the opposite of a Kegel? 
You buy a pair of like four steps and you just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, exactly. You just go to your, your gyno and you're like, hey, can I borrow a so, speculum, please? Or a speculum. Yeah. Is a forcep. What are forceps? Forceps are like grabby things. Okay. In no, surgery. speculum. To just. <laughs> just crank that like an old, you know, like a drawbridge <laughs> opening up. Just get that ready to go and just hold it and do yeah. some breath work. It's like you need tequila. You know, anal butt plugs but for the vagina the anal training kit the, <laughs> the anal training kit but for your ooh -ha. your vagina which obviously anatomically is meant to be able to stretch for childbirth but yeah that is not i don't know i just can't imagine in the videos that i watched which led to a really weird dream which we'll talk about <laughs> that's my favorite part is you had a dream about him so in the videos i watched my point like I never, first of all, I only like ethically consume porn, but I don't like it if I'm watching straight porn. I don't like it when the, I know the woman's not having a good time. I'm like, I see enough of that in my own life. I'm like, I, I want to, I, unless you are loving it, I'm not into it. I see enough of that, like behind my own eyes. But I've, seen, I've lived, I, why would I want to go through my own lived experience and trauma? Yeah. So then I had a dream about him and it's the kind of dream that you think that I had, but it was so weird. I was in Italy. I was with Raleigh. I lost her. The romance. The romance. And what I mean, we and Raleigh have gone to Italy together before. And I like lost her. And then I found him. And I was like, but you're Australian. Why are we in Italy? And then we hooked up. And in the dream, I don't want to get too graphic, but I had a great time. But then, but there was part of it where it hurt. And you know, pain in dreams, it's not like pain in real life. Like I knew it hurt, but they say you can't feel pain. Do you believe that? Well, yeah. You, yeah. It's yeah. not like real pain. So like mm -hmm. I, my like conscious thoughts came to the dream, which were this, there's no way this would work for my physical body. But then I was kind of in love with him. I was like enamored. Like I was in limerence with him. Then I woke up and I'm like obsessed with him now in the weirdest way. Like I don't want to, I would never ever sleep with him. Not because I don't think I physically could. He's also in L.A. right now. But you're like thinking about it. He's in L.A. right now for the Pornhub Awards, which I thought was so funny. He deserves all the awards, I'm sure, the accolades. But yeah, I've had a weird week and it's mostly been about this. But do you know, have you ever had a dream about someone that you would not, you don't even want and then you have a dream about them and you wake up and you feel differently? I'm haunted by those dreams. Yes. That's a thing. Yeah. Right? No, dude, it's the dream. Dude, I told... <laughs> I told what? some people about like when I've had like sex dreams about people that like I used to work with. That you used to work with. Yeah. And? What do you mean and? Then you what? Slept with them? No. Or just like made you feel like be like, huh. No, I, I ended up telling them. Or they ended up finding out. And they're like, well, was I any good? <laughs> it was awkward. And were they? Yeah. Because even when I've had sex dreams about people like, don't you, then you have the, the other part of that is having sex dreams about people you would never. Oh, ever no. I've had sex dreams about people I hate. 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 Well, and are repulsed by or whatever. Don't get any ideas. You're not. It's not the people you're thinking about. Yeah, if you don't get any ideas, relax. And those dreams are the worst. But like, even those, it's a physical thing. You can have orgasms in your dreams. So it's like, also, you'll like then will like sleep with someone, and it'll be technically good because it's in your dream. But you hate them, and you just don't. You would never have sex with them in real life. I would also, oh. again, hats off to you, sir. I would never have sex with the Girth Master because I would like. You keep saying that, but I ever. think I think it's, I think it, who are you trying to convince? I yourself. Don't know. He's also just not my type, but I'm like so can't stop. I, what about just like the like tip? <laughs> no, even that is offensive. You could have sex with his finger you and should, that would be like. That would be this. Yeah, basically a normal experience. If You know the <laughs> meme with like the hamster with the banana? What? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like the. You have like the most obscure. No. First of all, everyone knows I'm really is. bummed with like the. What was the last trend that you came up with? There's no way you haven't fucking seen but this. But what was the. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> that's you! Everyone seen that. Literally, so this, I literally can't stop thinking about it. The, in terms of like, yeah, no, even this is what it would be. The last trend, you're like, what's your craziest? Wait, let me explain or whatever. And you're like, it's supposed to be like really bad, but people were like doing like Obama and like hot yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's and, hear me? What's your craziest? Hear me out. Yeah, what is your craziest? Hear me out. And you're like, but they're supposed to be like bad ones, and you, but like none of them are bad. And then I saw one of me. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You've officially made it. You're in the zeitgeist as a crazy hear me out, but that's offensive. I was like, what? Yeah. So I don't, don't, don't bring this to me anymore. I well, And then I saw <laughs> one of Tom Sandoval at, right after that, which yeah, is maybe so, my shaping my algorithm, which that made sense. I don't want to be thrown into categories. I don't feel like I belong in. Didn't make sense. Anyways, but I think you should, I don't know, maybe 
flame a story or something and oh, see if there's a, I got I'm like you it's can start so, it's literally two Sex and the City references, one of which is when Miranda's getting sexually harassed by that sandwich outside <gasps> of Blimpies. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she's like, I can't have sex with a sandwich, can I? And like it's not something she would normally ever want. There's just like this weird interaction that happens. Mine was in a dream. Then <laughs> When Samantha meets the stallion, he's like, most women can't handle it. And she's like, ding, ding, ding. And she, he takes it out and she's like. And the thing is, I think that that's that guy walked so Girthmaster could run. We never saw it. Well, I'm just saying that's what I'm assuming that it looked like. But I feel like he's like definitely like your type. Yeah. Either way, I don't know what's going on. I need to get off the Internet for a little while for that. Take a, take a breath. Go touch some grass. Maybe touch. Well, you'd have to find a new co-host because I just I yet to believe I want to see I want to see proof of life of one of the women he slept with. I want a newspaper. I told I know one. Oh, I guess that's true. You know, an IRL one. Why'd she do it a second time? I'd be curious because she made it through the first time. So do you think that she did it because she for the second time because she liked it or because she could? She can't go back. <laughs> that's her only her only path forward. I mean, now all is, she said yeah. it was like it was like hectic because it was mass. I don't think she said it was like a terrible experience. But to be fair, I did do it to myself because I watched so many of his videos out of curio morbid curiosity because it was so shocking i was like just flipping through to see every single type of person he was with and how many videos did you watch so, uh, so uh, <laughs> how many videos does he have out the limit does not exist whatever is on pornhub is what i watched damn so anywho that's been a fun journey for the week but i can't believe he's in la i was like sent it to or i think i sent <laughs> it to you that he was there i was like he's i mean so kind of like serendipitous I would I would say. Well, maybe next time someday I'll be down and uh, we'll revisit it then. But anyway, that's that's the Girthmaster story. It's Girthmaster with two R's. <laughs> Go check it out for yourself. So many people are in the trenches with me now. We're like, you just ruined my day. A lot of people are like really excited about it. Actually, I wanted to ask you personally about this what? because on one of his videos, he was talking about he doesn't have a lot of personal play videos like just him. And he had some and he was like, I thought it was more for my gay audience. Like women who follow me, I'm curious what your thoughts are. So many women were like, no, we love it. Sound up, whatever. Is that something that would tickle your fancy? No. I would say not no for me, but it wouldn't be something that I'd be like, send me a bit of that. Like I want it immediately, especially with a stranger on the internet. No, I, I, it's never really occurred to me or been a thought that I'd want to watch a dude. No. Yeah, but I was well. I was surprised because I'm not obviously king shaming anyone. I love it if that's what you like. No, I'm just saying it. for me personal. Yeah. That's never been like, wow. Do you know what I feel like is missing from my like repertoire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um. No, I'm just saying like. But I guess you listen. Something for everyone out there. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I was just curious. I wanted to pull you. I'd be curious to see like listening to this who feels that way. But yeah, a lot of women were like sound up, and I was like, you little freak. <laughs> yeah, I love you, little In freak. Interesting. If it does it for you. Get it. I mean, I have another dream about him, so we got to move on. Yeah, well, we just spend a lot of time on that one. Where like, do you go from Girthmaster? I know. Because I like, have some, so many things on our note for the show are so, like, funny. Where, was, I was more curious than people that say crap. <laughs> because I saw a specific example, and we were just talking about that because we, we were watching The Bachelor. Oh. one of them, but, but that is not why I wrote it. Someone else said it, and I was like, if you say crap instead of shit, grow up. Or frick instead of fuck. What's another one that I hate? I hate the word crap more than, like, anything. In Utah, that's like a big thing because they, you know, they don't like swear. I'll say like, I don't freaking care. <laughs> sometimes. I don't know. But like Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll like be like, I, uh, the swearing can be so aggressive. I hear somebody else like cursing up a fucking storm. I'll be like, it's like kind of aggressive. So I'll try to like either omit it from my vocabulary or my speech and just use something else. But sometimes it just comes out. But yeah, like crap is uh, like, okay, so awful. Well, freaking itself, I actually think is like that specifically word out of all of them. I actually, I'll say that occasionally too. And it's more for emphasis because I say so much fuck. And actually for someone who talks the way I do, I was listening to a podcast recently and someone was on it. And I was like, oh, is that how I sound? I hope not. <laughs> so, like, you know, it can be a little too aggro, but you will never catch me saying crap. That's crazy. That's just like. And I'm. It, this is going to be boring now because I can't think of the specific example, but then it was doubled down on The Bachelor. But when I saw it, I was just like, that's an ick for me. That can go on the ick list. Yeah. I mean, if if you're using that because you want to swear, but you what like, the heck? You, you, what the heck? But you just can't like, just don't. Just say something else. What, what is there? 
I don't know, but I just, it just bothers me. I'm like, if you can't say shit, then. Well, I think it's also like sometimes the emphasis is put on it because it's like they even sometimes are like nervous to say that much even. Yeah, I just, and I, I mean, <laughs> I think anyone listening to this personally doesn't have a problem with profanities. I'm no, guessing, but probably not. There's just, it's a specific time. I think it's funny when someone who does swear uses it like that, like freaking for emphasis or whatever. But then it's just like, yeah, if you're literally just like too precious about it, I'm like, Ugh, get, go away. Like, I was like, Oh my heck. Commit to it. You, yeah. Put some gusto yeah. behind it, even if you're going to. Own it. I recently discovered that I've been paying for two Netflix subscriptions. Excuse me? Yeah, I don't know. Devastating. I'm just glad that now I know. And it's all thanks to Rocket Money. Did you know that nearly 75% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about? Duh. <laughs> I'm all the 75%. Oh. I could not believe it when they showed me that I was paying for two Netflix subscriptions each month. And unfortunately, that wasn't even all. Between streaming services, fitness apps, and delivery service, it's never ending. And thanks to Rocket Money, I am no longer wasting money on the ones I forgot about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending as compared to last month's spending. So I can clearly see what my spending habits are. Plus, they'll help you create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. Thank God. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash disrespectfully. That's rocketmoney.com slash disrespectfully. Rocketmoney.com slash disrespectfully. Want to know what I've noticed about my skin? Obviously. They always say that your skin looks better when you're more hydrated, of course. But it's like actually true. It totally is. So I've been really trying to focus on my hydration and my skin is like glowing. Yeah. So what? Are you just drinking more water? What's happening? <laughs> I've been drinking liquid IV. Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, liquid IV quenches your thirst faster than water alone with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, all in a single sugar-free stick. Well, it's yeah. just another thing we have in common because <laughs> I love liquid IV. I personally love the white peach flavor because it makes me feel like I'm just laying on the beach. I love the convenient packaging. I carry the packets in my purse and I look forward to drinking them because they're delish. If I have a headache or just need, you know, something, something, I just pour it into my water and I'm set. You're good to go. Liquid IV has three times more electrolytes than the leading sports drink, has no artificial sweeteners and zero sugar, which is so important to us. It has eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness and is non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. So everyone in LA can enjoy it and around <laughs> the world. Exactly. However you hydrate, grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code disrespectfully at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code disrespectfully at liquidiv.com. I really love my Jenny Kane cashmere cardigan. The cocoon cardigan? Yeah. It's like a hug, really. We obviously have been talking about how I've been trying to wear clothes and that has <laughs> been my stepping stone. It's also cute. It makes you look put together. Because normally I'll rock around in like a hoodie, but this feels like elevated. It's classy. It looks nice. It makes you just look more chic in general. But then it's just so comfortable. And I'm obviously not going to wear something that doesn't feel like it's just a little cotton kiss, a little cashmere kiss. Support for today's episode comes from our favorite, Jenny Kane. Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through. Their staples make getting dressed so much easier than it's ever been before. And obviously, I'm someone who needs help with that. Think minimalist and effortless, but totally refined. From luxurious cashmere sweaters and iconic accessories to elevated versions of your 
your everyday basics. Not to mention the most incredible home essentials too. And for a limited time for our listeners, you get 15% off their first order. Go to JennyKane.com and use code disrespectfully to get 15% off. I have stocked up on their sweaters and I can't get enough of their cotton collection. Their new cotton foster sweater and the Cameron crew neck are like the perfect everyday pieces. They have this new oversized half zip in like an ultra luxe buccal rib. It's not only like the cutest thing, but it's like perfect for spring. Look into that. It's sundress season. Catch me styling the day dress every single day. And I'm equally obsessed with the Callan dress. It's a classic vest dress that feels instantly timeless. And Eve Sandals like everything you could want in a classic spring shoe. She's very versatile. Very. When I've been building my wardrobe in the last few years and I've been trying to elevate things, I really want things that are timeless, that are capsule pieces. It's so much easier to mix and match. Find your new uniform at jennycane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code disrespectfully at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code disrespectfully. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Again, that's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code disrespectfully. I have a scary story and an embarrassing story. Oh. So which one do you want first? Dealer's choice. Let's talk about a scary story. Okay. So this girl, because we were talking about AI on Nick's podcast, she had made a TikTok of her and someone took the TikTok of her and used AI voice generation over it. And it literally looked the same. It was some weird brand that had color changing eye drops. The AI generation said that Hailey Bieber blocked them just because they claimed she place an order for the color changing eye drops. None of that actually happened. Basically, what went on was the company was trying to get more views. Oh. So they pretended there was a conflict with Hailey Bieber that never happened. And they used a girl's video. They were like, hey, we need like a cute girl doing telling this story and saying she owns the company. So they used her video with an AI voice telling a fake story. And the girl I saw her stitch was like, hey, FYI, this isn't real. This is me. This is my face. This is my account. This was a TikTok I had done telling a completely different story. They used AI Ew. to use a voice and make a story. And I was like, Ugh. don't you think that's scary? That, no, I think it's terrifying because how many people fell for it and believed it? You can't believe anything on social media. Well, it's like all the deep fakes and again, stuff we were talking about. I'm like, this is, it's here now. Mm -hmm. And it's the, like, so what do you believe in the part of, the problem with it is so many people are so gullible, but even people who aren't typically gullible, it's hard to differentiate. So like mm -hmm. I, I went back and watched the original and I was like, oh, I would have had no idea that this is not what this girl was talking about. And it wasn't Jesus. her. And also color changing eye drops. No, thank you. That's a recipe <laughs> to lose your vision. Yeah, your eyeballs are going to fall out of your head. You put them in, the color does change because you see no color anymore. <laughs> Do you think that's You're what they blind. Mean? Yeah, the colors you see change because you don't see anymore. Correct. Not your, yeah. Jesus. So that's scary and uplifting. And then for some levity, I was getting a tattoo mm -hmm. the other day. Mm -hmm. And I was with a couple people that were also getting tattoos. And they were on this kid's very slick floor, to be fair. I don't know what his name is, but if you like fine line, single needle tattoos in LA, Christian something, I follow him. Go find <laughs> it. Amazing. Christian tattoos, I think. But I was on these roller chairs scooting around mostly because I have ADHD. Like I just was just like moving and being funny. And I went to go push back and I like the chair slipped and I kicked his tattoo setup. So the ink went flying. It fell down. Luckily, he lifted his arm. He was tattooing my friend. He oh. lifted his arm and we all stared at each other in shock. I kid you not for a minute straight. I just had my hands. I, I did it and just went. It was so devastating. I cannot explain you words. That is the worst thing I've ever done. Well, and he, then he just gave me shit the rest of the day. And he was very lovely about it. I was so mortified. I like. I was like, what did he, what's he like? He was like, all's well that ends well. Like, you're good. But I, <sighs> when I've been trying to fall asleep at night, I just hear the noise of the, the stand falling on the floor. That I would, I would have PTSD. PTSD. I mean, it was one of the most <laughs> embarrassing things I've ever, like, who does that? I mean, imagine. He messed up her tattoo. <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, what would you have done? And he was like, I would have looked at her and then pointed at you and been like, obviously it wouldn't have been his fault. But I'm like, this is not my first tattoo. It's not my first rodeo. What was I doing? Hey, what were you doing? How about next time someone's tattooing someone and there's wheels on a slick 
surface you just don't move around i literally then stood up like as far away from the table as i could i was like <laughs> go sit in the corner well and before that have i have we talked about alien arm who what alien arm alien arm we talked about this I'm... it's a it's a phenomenon alien arm syndrome it is a motor disorder defined by involuntary hand or arm movements that occur either in addition to or instead of planned or willed movement so some people who believe in it are like scared to shower and shave because they're scared they'll shave their head like accidentally like your your limbs take control of you right oh so i was like 10 minutes before this happened i was like do you guys know what alien arm is <laughs> you like cursed yourself i was like do you ever are you ever afraid you'll like start tattooing something you're not supposed to like you'll get alien arm and he was like no that's not a thing and i literally put it out there and then i kicked the tattoo stand made a mess and was like this is what i get from mentioning alien arm around a tattoo you have alien leg alien leg Alien food. Anyway, I'm so glad that Mandy's tattoo wasn't ruined. So shout out, Mandy. Oof. Sorry, that was yeah. You were <laughs> very lucky. Do you have any? Do you have any embarrassing stories that you've had this week? Do you want to tell us about? To make me feel better. I feel like I had a pretty good week. I did have like a marathon drinking day on Sunday. I went on a friend date with a new friend, mm. and I had too many margaritas because the, the margaritas at Costa Vega like we talked about. They bring it in like a little carafe, mm -hmm. so they pour it in the already pretty sizable. Um, cocktail glass and then there's like you know <laughs> some left drink. yeah so you drink that down and you pour it in it yeah so i mean you drink like six of those but it's like really like more than six i don't know but we were there from like two to like nine and i don't know you know when you kind of like think back about like the conversation you have with someone and you have like little cringe moments where you're like did i, did I really say that almost every conversation i've ever had with another living person <laughs> like oh maybe like, I know, like, we, the next day we both talked, we're like, she's like, ah, I feel a little hung today. And I'm like, oh, girl, same. She's like, okay, good. It's not just me. I'm like, okay, good. So, like, we both, we both hung over. So, we both definitely, like, drank a lot. And, 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 so, like, maybe she doesn't remember. <laughs> we were there forever. So, we talked about a lot of things. And, you know, when you're, like, meet someone for the first time, like, you're, like, just, you go through, like, a ton of subjects. And, you know, especially when, like, I don't even want to, like, get into, like, the specifics because I'm, like, I'm cringing at heart. Hmm. Maybe I'll be able to talk about it soon okay. for one day, but I'm just kind of like. Margarita <laughs> conversations and need to circle back when the pain has subsided. But yeah, I think I just was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cringy. hate that. I mean, I'm that way too. I literally have a single glass of wine. It's like, we've talked about it. Let's take it back to 98. Some of it's subsided now that the anxiety is like worn off a little bit, but I'm like, oh, maybe that's not too bad. But it's also like, oh, I don't know. Those second drinks, dangerous. I was at Musso and Frank the other day. And they're martinis. They do the same thing. You get the little craft in the uh, ice buckets. I love places that do that. And you just second drink. It, yeah. Like fill it up and then give me like the rest of it on the side. Because, you know, like it's it can be so painful going out to get a drink and it's already like $16, $17. And like it's two sips and it's gone. Isn't it crazy because we live in L.A. When you go other places, I forget how outrageous things are priced here. You go. I, I, I'm like, it's free. Oh, my God. I go to a restaurant anywhere else and I'm like, this is great. It's so cheap. The only other place it feels the same is like New York, but any other state or where you go and you're like, wow, it's not normally $22 for a tequila soda. That's I know. I feel like here. whenever I go somewhere that's like, again, not, not here and it's like two like cocktails and it's like $13. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> everyone come look at this. Oh, ever, around for everyone. Yeah. No, it's just like, I can't believe it. Um, But yeah, no, that. So it's not really embarrassing. Other than that, like I've, I've just been, I'm trying to, what have I been doing this week? I mean, I, for, the second you asked me that, I forget who I am. I, in terms of embarrassment, I do feel like I could be in the Guinness Book of World Records. I think I've done more embarrassing <laughs> things in my life than most people. I have, no, I'm the very thing sure is, of that. I do. I like, I do constantly, but I kind of block them. Like I, like I just, I sort of have like blockers. I'm just like, we're gonna, we're just gonna, we're going to file that away to the, to the dark place where we don't, we don't think about it. I would do anything to be able to compartmentalize like that. I can't. Mine is like, hey, let's relive all of it. It's, it's survival technique. It's how, it's how I <laughs> survive out here. Because I, I will literally ruminate constantly if I have to just, like, if I'm able to think about those things on a daily basis, I will. And I won't, I won't get out of bed ruminate constantly put it on my tombstone literally here lies dana kathan ruminated constantly oh, kind of funny mayor of 
mayor of rumination land. I have property. I like literally like that's where I live. So like, I can't I cannot be thinking about the shit I said two months ago, yesterday, last week. Like I can't do that because again, I won't get anything done. I ruminate about everything else constantly. The little things I gotta I gotta put them away somewhere. Yeah, I mean, good thing no one knows the me kicking the tattoo stand story. Don't tell anyone, okay, guys? <laughs> yeah. Horrifying. Do you know what? I am proud of myself because I think I've learned how to be a little bit more of my soft girl, at least when it comes to like dating. Okay. Slightly. Because I decided as much as I feel like I have the confidence to go up to somebody and say, hi, I feel like I can take control or I don't care, you know, like all that. I'm not doing that anymore. In general? In general, because I'm, I keep my options open, but I'm sitting back and allowing people to pursue me. I really am you in know, that stage too. Because I, you know, I'm the type of person that's like, you know what? It's 2024. Like you can like text the person who cares. Don't wait for them. If you like them, da, da, da. but I'm like, no, I'm in a place where I'm just like, I want to be pursued. I will still be like as upfront and like open about like my intentions. And like, if I like you, if I don't, I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm not gonna waste my time. But at the end of the day, like I want to see like interest and effort from a person. And if they're not making it, then like, I'll, goodbye. Like if someone else is around there, like and they're hitting me up and they're texting me and they're showing interest and they're making effort, like I'm not going to be holding a little candle for you, hoping that you're going <laughs> to reach out. Like, and I'm not going to like, I just want to say, like, what's wrong with wanting to be pursued? Nothing. I've been off dating apps for a long time now and I very much feel the same way. I'd actually be curious to know your thoughts on this because I saw a thing that people are like, when you're in your 30s, you should be less picky or like as you get older in terms of dating. No. I can say with, confidence. I'm the most picky I've ever been because I'm 33 and I'm single, but my life slaps. So yeah. it's like, I just, I've made it this far unless someone comes and blows my mind and it's a great fit. I just don't care. Like I'm not lowering my standards because I'm afraid of being alone. It's not happening. Yeah, I no. encourage you all to join me on that journey. Fuck that. 100%. Like my standards are very high. My expectations are low. And I know that sounds weird. We've talked about this as well. I don't expect anything from anyone that I'm not like in any kind of like relationship with. That's yeah. crazy to think that. But I do apply my standards to every situation. Like I've, I have standards for the way I want to be treated or spoken to or pursued and all that. So I will apply that to my situations. But I don't expect anyone. I don't expect people to like hit me up or expect them to like follow through on those things. But if you're not like doing those things, you don't care. You don't have interest. Effort is a reflection of interest. So like, I want to just see where those things are at. And if you're not, then someone else will be. Right. So like no harm, no foul, no loss, no whatever. Like, and it sucks because like, you know, someone can be great. You have a great time with them. But at the end of the day, if they're not showing up, if they're not walking through the door, then I don't want to waste my time. I'll match their energy. Yeah. But like, what's wrong with for like the first like couple weeks? I, I like you because you want to meet someone that's like, oh, I think you're amazing. And I do not want anyone else to have the opportunity to like take your attention or take your interest or like that's the kind of like gusto and effort and energy I need to see from someone at this point. Same. And I think I, people ask us all the time, what would you tell like your 20 year old version of yourself or or whatever? And God, there are so many things. But that's just such a big one for me is fill your own cup, make your life so happy and amazing. And I don't mean it is 24 seven all the time, but for the most part, I am the happiest I've ever been. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm dating someone. It's because that is fundamentally what my life is. So the great thing is when people come and go from a dating perspective, you're still complete. Like, yeah. and it's, it's, it doesn't mean there aren't still things they want and whatever, but like, man, I think that that is such a boring played out trope of like the spinster, your thirties, you're in your forties, you're in fifties. Like, no, literally live a life that you love, design it that way, be very intentional about it mm -hmm. and the rest will follow. And like, there are worse things in the world than being alone. My God, yeah, worse things in the world. Because you could be alone. with somebody who, you you know, doesn't treat you right, doesn't show up for you, doesn't support your inner thoughts and feelings and emotions, doesn't try to understand you. And guess what's more lonely than being single, being in that kind of relationship. So. Knowing your worth and knowing the type of relationship you deserve and just kind of hanging out and doing the things that make you feel good and waiting for someone to like be that person for you. You know, 
it's not it's not sad Mm -mm. i think it's awesome kind of one of those things where it's like well i'm gonna be great either way i'm gonna have the best time no matter what so if someone wants to come along and make it even better cool but if not don't waste my time like earth master call me just kidding (laughs) no i yeah i think there's a lot of power in that too yeah so i'm just like that's where i'm at right now it's just like you know what until someone's really putting the effort and then i'm gonna be like you know what i'll i will as well Mm -mm. i'm joining you on that journey and that's where i am too that it feels soft because it's like i don't i'm not i'm not putting my energy out there i'm keeping it here and then allowing the energy to come to me great laid plan right hopefully it gets you laid we'll see pulling for you i'm feeling the same way so i mean again it's like the least toxic place i've ever been in from a from from dating, like if for, for allowing those things to come to me and whatever. And in the meantime, I'm just like, yeah, things are, I just wasted so much time pursuing things that didn't want me and being sad and all that. And it's just like, yeah, design a life you want to live and all that will be so much less stressful and it allows you to be soft. Well, yeah. Also, I think it's just healing the anxious attachment that's in me as well. If I can just like always be recentering my energy, not sending it out there. It's just I like really like introspective there. Yeah. I liked it. Anyway, should we talk about our basement? Because yes. we have the same basement and it's like, it's a big one. It is a big one, but I have, I just thought of one to add because it was the other thing we wanted to talk about, but this is the perfect place to put it. So yeah, you start. Okay. Let's talk about the basement. The basement, the big old basement person this week is the man or man's. I don't know if it's the same person, but it feels like it's the same person that has been randomly punching women in New York in broad daylight. Like, what the fuck is that about? Like, women, I think it's all kind of on the same area, maybe the West Village, I believe, mm-hmm. in that sen- like kind of general area. In, like, like I said, broad daylight, who are kind of unassuming, walking around maybe on their phone, and he just walks up, usually says something like, sorry, and then just punches them in the head. and they all have they're all looking on their phone yeah so it's like it's also the same kind of woman so i they think they were they're speculating they're the person the man who's hitting women mm-hmm. it, and a girl was talking about that everyone's like women are being punched and it's like no there's a man running around punching women he's looking for someone who's not paying attention so he can kind of catch them off guard and get away but yeah mm-hmm. the people are speculating if it's a group of people or or men or just one man I don't know, but either way, get in the basement, you fucking weirdo. It's that's like really sc- and then women are like, okay, well, I guess I should just like be more aware and not look at my phone. No, how about don't be punching <laughs> like anyone. Women, you know, just anyone, period. That's that is the freakiest behavior I've ever heard of in my life. Punch a stranger for no reason, completely unprovoked. Just because they're like looking at their phone and you can get away from like what is wrong with you? Who hurt you that bad? It's what's really scary about it to me is it's already a really aggressive behavior, but it's escalating in terms of because volume, like mm-hmm. we heard about the first one and then the second one. And then I feel like there's been like 10, like it was just like, ratata. yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> ratata. I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> so for me, it's like violence usually leads to more violence. And it's when those patterns are happening, the scariest thing about it is it's, they're going to keep looking for a bigger and bigger thrills. So who knows? So women stay safe out there. I'm sorry that you're dealing with this and you fucking loser get in the basement. I did see someone was arrested. Right. Okay. For one of them, but we don't know if it's, there's multiple <sighs> what the deal is. Yeah. So that person, people's responsible for punching women in New York. You are in the basement. For sure. It's fucking despicable. We did. We both had that. But yeah. do you know who else can join him or them? Who? Diddy. Oh, my God. How could we forget about that? Oh, gee. <sighs> I saw something else, too, that he's got like a tunnel or something in his house of sorts. A I cave? Would, a tunnel? I would not be surprised by anything. But there. so there's been rumors for years, right? Yeah. For anyone that doesn't know, Diddy was just um, his kids were detained. He did not. His, his jet did go to an area of the world in which they don't do extradition, but he was not on it. So he, they have him. He's, he's here. He's in. So why did his plane go there? I don't totally know if it was like a failed escape attempt or whatever, but there's been rumors for years that he is involved in sex trafficking, that he's a predator, R. Kelly-esque. This is alleged. Cassie really told us now, didn't she? Cassie Mm -hmm. came out and sued him said a bunch of things that were pretty believable based on, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. He settled in 24 hours 
I'm sorry. If someone sues you for, I think it was $30 million. Someone sues you for that amount of money and says all these really outlandish things about you and you settle immediately, you are admitting guilt. You, the next day he was like, I didn't do all these things. I'm just hurt. I want her to be well. No, if you really didn't do it, that would not be how you navigated. Good for Cassie. She deserves that money. I read through that, those court documents. What happened to her is so egregious and upsetting. Imagine the people who don't have even her position of power, her platform, her voice. So I think more and more is going to come out. And I think that he is, uh, he's an R. Kelly. Get in the basement. Did you see that video that he, of that girl that he was like, He's like, oh, introduce yourself. And she goes, I'm so, and he's like, oh, and she was on the street and I adopted her. And did like, did you see that video? She's like 13 this, or something. She doesn't look that young, but like, I thought definitely. she said, her, I thought she said her age. I'm not basing it off. No, she said, I'm so and so. I'm a, like, an Aries or some Virgo. She said her, oh, like, zodiac sign, which is a weird thing. But I don't know. The whole, it was a weirdest thing I'd ever seen. I mean, I, I didn't watch the whole thing because it made me uncomfortable, but shit is awful. I mean, even before Cassie, I've I've heard whispers for years, even honestly just living in LA and knowing people that have been at parties of his and whatnot. Like, yeah, I've heard things for years. So all men like this, every single, expose yourself. We want to know all about it. We want you in the basement and then we want you in jail. So Diddy, basement. Hometown Heroes is always an antidote. Okay, to anything I know. Let's upsetting, get- So let's hometown. Brianna says, one of the most bizarre dates I've ever been on was over 10 years ago, but it still pops up in my mind because of how odd it was. This guy who I had been on a couple of very mid dates with invited me to a show with him in town. He told me to bring some friends and that we would all meet up and hang out. I got there with my two friends and immediately spotted him. He met eyes with me and proceeded to ignore me while simultaneously staying close all night. Anytime I would try to get his attention, he would look the other way and start talking to other people. When the show started, he came and stood about two feet in front of me and my friends, watched the whole show from there, then left without saying goodbye. Never said a word to me all night. I was super confused. On the car ride home, my friends and I were talking about how weird the whole thing was when I got a text from him telling me how great it was to see me and how much fun he had. Then he asked me if we could go out again soon. I didn't respond and ended up ghosting him. I still run into him from time to time and try to yeet myself out of there before (laughs) he sees me. Oh, all this time later, it's still my go to dating story whenever brought bad dates are brought up. What do you think happened? The, he was not a date. Neither of them were on a date. What the what? What made me laugh when I was reading this is just how delusional this man is. And when like it's kind of a category of a gaslight ghoster, although I think he believes it like he thinks they had a good time. But how could you think that? Imagine someone ignoring you all night long and then texting you and being like that was amazing <laughs> what dude and that she yeeted herself out no, of no, no. yeah like <laughs> blog that is so tra- like invites you to go and then you get there and he like ignores you i don't know Could well be- brianna brianna thank you for writing in that was super yeah, funny thank and you super and weird what an oddball anyway okay cat says i once went on a date with my uber driver yes i know it's a little strange well, I let him pick me up and drive. That's nice. He did that for you. Five stars. <laughs> and did, was it free? Well, I let him pick me up and the drive over was okay till we got to his house and he showed me his apartment, which included a tacky white leather couch. Then he proceeded to show me pictures of him when he modeled, which looked like back in the 70s because he was an older gentleman, which I have nothing against. He showed me the pictures, which felt like an hour. He made me dinner and it was really good pasta. After... <laughs> Afterwards, he asked if he could give me a massage, and I said yes. My whole body broke out, and I got very itchy. So I told him I wanted to go home, and he kept asking me to stay, and I said no. I ordered my Uber and walked out of the apartment to wait outside for my Uber while he continued to follow me and got mad at me for leaving and not giving him a kiss or anything. After this, I didn't date for almost a year. I have so many questions. Why did you get so itchy? <laughs> exactly. What is giving that, like, thing where, you know, that... I don't believe the story, but the one story of the guy that was like putting the lo- the weird lotion and feeding the person to like eat them, you know, the, can- the weird like pseudo cannibal story. I think you're thinking of Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, basically. <laughs> no, but I've never heard of that. Okay, no. there's a, there was a there was oh, like there was a there was a story circulating about like this girl. She was in. I don't I don't know if it's true because I've heard like different people tell it. This is like a lore. Yeah, this is a lore going okay. around. A girl that went on a date and like. They went and had like 
really delicious food and the whole thing and like the same thing like gave her like a massage and she broke out in like this like weird hive thing and she went to a doctor and they tested what it was and they're like this is normally what we give for people or like i don't I don't know. I'm not telling it correctly, but basically it was like he was trying to prep her. To- yeah, it was like a weird like prepping thing. But it's like, yeah, like it's, it's all but the whole like, look at this photograph of me. Make you food. Let me give you a massage. I mean, it's, I guess this is a lesson in like, don't go to some man's home. On I a think date. <laughs> I think back in the day they used to say like, oh, don't sleep with someone, you know, like trying to shame women about, you know, promiscuity and whatever. But I personally would not go to a man's house the first night I met him because you don't know what he's capable of. Like more than anything. And also you, you he was massaging you. So I have to imagine some part of your clothes were out. You, he, she was in a vulnerable position, which is not at all. Yeah. Her fault. He's, but I'm just so glad that nothing you ate good pasta, which is a yeah. plus. You got a massage. Even it was itchy and you got out of there. But him also men acting like you owe them anything, anything. even if they bought you a dinner at French laundry, a mm-hmm. little Michelin star. Situ- I don't care. You do not owe it's and all, dates should not be transactional. I bought you this, so I want sex, or I bought you this, so I want to kiss. Or... Yeah, definitely not shaming you about this anyway, because no. like the whole thing about this is just like so wild and crazy. But like, yeah, but the fact not dating for almost a year would I would be feeling some kind of way after this as well. Sorry, cat. Sorry, cat. <laughs> hope hope the itching stopped. At least that was the only itching that came out of the situation. Oh yeah, you know it could be worse. Mm. Should we dub dub dd dub dub dd? <laughs> Danielle says, hello, you two beautiful queens. Hello. Hey. I'm, <laughs> I'm 33 and I have been doing a lot of soul searching and taking accountability for my actions. The only problem is I feel like I always take other people's feelings into consideration before I validate my own feelings in a situation. My question is, when and how do I accept other people's feelings and also my own? Thank you as always. You two are my weekly dose of dopamine. XOXO Gossip Girl. I mean, it, it can be difficult when you're kind of doing... Uh, like sort of introspective work and you want to validate yourself but also like be considerate of other people I mean it's like kind of like doing like shadow work where you want to like yeah look at those like parts of yourself that maybe you don't like and it, and it's kind of casting clarity on other people I, I think you're, it's uncomfortable I think is what you're describing and yeah like that sort of discomfort of it all but I think you got to keep going through it and go maybe deeper with it Does that makes sense yeah and I also think we you have to be your priority. We all yeah. do that, right? It's your life. So I think there's also very much a way to be like, whatever someone's lived experiences and their truth is their experience and their truth. So it's okay to recognize other people's feelings, but just don't allow that to invalidate your own. Like you, and it, it's, yeah, it sounds like you have further to go on it and need to evaluate. But like, just because their feelings exist doesn't then take away space for yours too. They can exist. That's okay it's okay to validate them but you first and foremost have to take care of you and you know sounds like you're very self-aware which is amazing in doing the work 100 percent, yeah accepting and validating other people's like that doesn't invalidate your own so keep going yeah and even if you're doing that personally i don't know if she's saying that she's like having these conversations with them but it's also not your job to make anyone else feel validate it like they they have to do that work for themselves too so it's you know i don't know if this is a thing where she's like having to have these conversations it's or just the, doing it privately well, i think it, i think she just thinks it has to be like an either or like either they're right in the situation oh. i'm wrong or i'm wrong and they're right like how do i accept like when is it like i accept their feelings and then i put mine aside or it's like it, it, it's not i think those things can it's, it's very yeah it's, it's, a, it's very nuanced but like i think when you're looking into those situations maybe you can apply that type of, I don't know does that make sense I hope so yeah Danielle we'll see she might be like this is bullshit yeah no I mean I, I, I think, finally got picked and this is what they have to say no I think we I think yeah we good luck girl it can be complicated yeah know, that's so, yeah, yeah also it's just not necessarily that cut and dry sometimes yeah Casey says hey y'all really dig the pod I'm not your target demographic 44 year old dude <gasps> we Yay. have a dude in the house hi Casey but a female Friend introduced me to Vanderpump Rules during height of the pandemic, and I've been pretty much hooked ever since. You two are a couple of my faves. Dana, I was bummed when you left the show, but I get it. My question is how you feel about dating a guy who owns a house while you're renting. Do you feel like there's a power dynamic there? I own and my current partner rents. It's a fairly new-ish relationship. 
but I feel like she kind of feels obligated to hang and stay at my place because I have a house and she has an apartment. I truly don't care. I just want to spend time with her. Thoughts on this. What can I do to make her more comfortable? Thanks in advance for your advice. Please keep the eps rolling. Mm -hmm. Casey, I love you. We have a guy. I'm so excited. Thanks, Casey. Okay. Tell your guy friends. And you guys should all <laughs> hug each other more also. Kiss each other on the mouth. Kiss each other on the mouth. We do it all the time. <laughs> um, I mean, do you think that she feels like she has to hang at your house because it's like a house and hers is an apartment? Or does she just like maybe want to hang out there? Like your house, they... maybe she might like your space more than she likes uh, her own. Yeah. I feel like in any relationship I've ever been in, situationship, whatever, we choose to to gravitate toward whatever space is nicer. And so like it, if I like someone's house more, I want to be there. But then also if I think their place is disgusting, I'm like, we're coming to mine. My home, my home is very clean. So I think maybe you need to talk to her about it because maybe she doesn't feel uncomfortable and you're just worried about her feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, has she made comments like, oh, well, you don't want to come to my place. It's just like it's just like an apartment. Is she is she feeling like you know, I'm not embarrassed because it's an apartment and not a house. Her, is she saying that herself? Because if that's the case, you could just be like, no, I love your place. Like, I love hanging out there. Like, I'm comfortable there because it's yours and it reminds me of you. And it's like, I like to be, you know, I think there could be like that positive reinforcement of like wanting to be there. I mean, or I, I would be curious what the conversations are, why you are feeling like that. that's the problem, that it's like she feels uncomfortable or doesn't feel comfortable. Right. Also, Casey, we love you, but you need to tell her immediately that you don't care where you are. You just want to spend more time with her. Mm -hmm. That is so sweet and amazing. And just tell her that also. Like, yeah, I think it's just all about don't leave anything up to assumption. Like, I think that's so many times that people run into problems. She might be totally comfortable. Maybe she's not, but you need to find that from her and just express that and be like, hey, FYI, if you want to spend more time at your place, I'm happy to. I don't care where we are. I just want to be with you. Yeah. Imagine if someone said that to you. Communication is like really important, especially yeah. when it's things like this, because it's it can be such like a nothing whatever. But like leaving these kind of things left untouched can like, I don't know, sometimes become bigger issues than they need to. Right. So I would just, yeah, just bring it up like kind of very casually. Yeah. Just be like, why do we never hang out at your place? And just see what she says. There you go. To just be like, oh, well, I'd like to hang out here more. Or, or like, well, why would we hang out there? It's like, so, just see what, like how she responds and then, you know, go from there. We're rooting for you guys, though. Yeah. Super cute. Cute, cute. Okay. Lucy says, hey, y'all, I love your podcast. I look forward to it every week and y'all are both hot. Okay. Love. <laughs> so me and my ex of four years broke up last October and in January of this year, I found out she was cheating on me for six months. She was sleeping with both of us, met her family and still coming around mine, telling both of us the same things down to the same baby names. Ugh. Uh, I know I should hate her and never want to speak to her again, but I'm so heartbroken. I really thought I was going to marry this girl, and now we're strangers and she's in another relationship. I just want to stop thinking about all the lies. When does the hurt end? Oh. Lucy, I'm so sorry that happened to you. And unfortunately, yeah. there's no date on a calendar we can give you. To when it hurt, the hurt ends, it just takes time. Yeah. But let me tell you, and I know you don't want to hear this because no one ever does. This girl did you such a favor. Mm -hmm. She was cheating on you and telling the other person, even the baby names you had discussed, which is such an intimate thing. That's yeah. bye. Goodbye to her. Yeah. No, and I mean, this, the hardest part about breakups is that you go from being that person being the most important person and thinking about the future and that being like the center of your universe to being strangers. But the good news is, is that there's going to come a day where it's not, it's gonna not going to hurt. And it's not going to matter. Like all the stuff that matters is just not going to. And that sucks that that's how it goes. But like, just hang on to that. I don't know. It's not going to hurt one day. So like, I'm not saying you have to absolutely feel it right now, but let that be your motivation to like carry you through this time. Yeah. That like one day, everything you're feeling is going to just be nothing but good feeling. I think it's actually Dr. Phil on Nick's podcast. It was like, the only thing worse than being in a bad relationship for five months is being in a bad relationship for five months and one day. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, you were together for four years, but imagine had you been together even longer than that or started a family or whatever. So just sit with where you are right now and like let let it happen. But then you're going to wake up not long from now and be like, OK, Hi. this is getting easier. And then you're going to meet someone amazing. And yeah embrace the suck and 
you know, write down all the things that you want in the future. I want Taco Bell in the future. Probably going to stop and grab <laughs> okay. it when we're done here. I'm so hungry. Anonymous says, I got a fucking problem. I have a close friend that is getting married, but I'm not in her wedding party. My boyfriend and I have been close to the couple for years, and my friendship with the bride has become much closer in recent years. We hang out all the time and talk about how much we value this friendship between the four of us. I'm included in everything else, bachelorette, rehearsal dinner, etc. But I just can't help but feeling sad since I'm left out of the most important part, especially because my boyfriend will be in the wedding. Do I let her know my feelings are hurt? If I should keep it to myself, how do I stop thinking about it and taking it so personally? Oh, I've never been a bride, but I think you have to take this one on the chin. It's yeah. Not your wedding. When it comes to like wedding stuff, it's you. Uh, you cannot at all make it about you. And I always tell like other people when they're getting married, like you cannot consider anyone else's feelings. Like it's not about anyone else. It's about you. And I don't know, obviously, like how she chose and went about it. Like maybe she chose like friends from childhood or family members. Or I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Like, I don't know if you've stopped to consider the people that are in her wedding party and maybe her future husband is a little, you know, he's just kind of picking from the, <laughs> the whatever. Yeah. But I think like, you know, she's still including you in those things. And that's what matters. Yeah, I would be more weirded out by it if you were, weren't included in the bachelorette and the rehearsal dinner or whatever. So yeah, though, guess what? Those are fun things. And the good yeah. news is that you don't have to like wear the, the dress and you don't have to like be in the photos. You're still part of all the like the fun things that like your boyfriend's going to be part of. The only thing that you're not going to be part of is like standing and waiting to walk down the procession line and wear, like standing in photos like that shit ain't fun. But like still being able to participate in the other things that like not necessarily all the wedding guests are going to be a part of. So like she's including you in those things. I think she's trying to like be conscious about that. But like you don't know about the rest of it. So you're going to have to just sort of let it go and just try to like be supportive and happy. And it's okay to feel that way. Yeah, of course. Privately and have feelings. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to be offensive or harsh. This honestly was eye-opening for me. Someone I saw at TikTok, Jemima Kirk, was answering questions on Instagram or something. And someone was like, how do we stop feeling so insecure about something, something, something? And she was like, I think you all think about yourselves too much. And I thought that was actually such sound advice. So basically what I'm saying in this scenario is don't make it about you. It's I don't think it's a personal attack. I don't think it necessarily speaks to the closeness of your relationship. If you weren't included in anything, I could understand it more. But like, it's okay to feel it privately, but maybe just keep it to yourself. Talk to your boyfriend about it and enjoy, enjoy yeah. the wedding. Have a good time. I mean, we all have those like feelings, but they're always usually most of the time definitely coming from a place of insecurity. Yeah. And you need to just like work through those moments so you don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean that in a bad way. But like we all we all get insecure. We all feel that way. But like you got to like learn just to kind of like push through it. Take it from me and Katie. We're like the embarrassment czars of L.A., as we were saying earlier. So <laughs> you don't want those moments. Yeah. Anyway, that's all we got. I think that's it today. <laughs> there ain't nothing else. Because, we, we, yeah, we've, we've given it all. We've left it on the floor. It's been quite a bit. Yeah, I'm going to go out into the world and see what kind of damage I can do. I'm going to eat a Doritos Los Tacos Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Doritos Los Locos? Tacos? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't yeah, know what it's called. Thing. Okay, bye. Bye. Babe, you're going to see the power of women. Like, disrespectfully. Disrespectfully.